Anish Parikh joins us now to talk a little bit about what happens next from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. You were with us on election night. Anish, nice to have you back. Uh, first of all, uh, 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 judges have already responded to some of these lawsuits, so let's, uh, let's bring folks up to date on, on where things stand, what the claims are, and what their status is in the court. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the first thing I want all the viewers to understand is, you know, lawsuits following a, an election is, is absolutely normal. I mean, post-election litigation is very normal. There are lawsuits that are always filed on election day and the days after in response to typically mundane issues such as equipment malfunctions, printing errors, or, you know, polls not being open on time. Um, but but typically they receive very little attention, but obviously this year is a completely different landscape and uh, everything is under a lot more intense scrutiny because the president has spent the year making frequent claims about election fraud. So now for any of these routine cases to really affect the outcome of the election, uh, the ballots being contested would need to be both a big enough in number to determine that state's results could change based on any type of lawsuit. And more specifically, B, is it has to occur in a state where uh, where th that, that's absolutely decisive for, for the election results. Um, up until this point, there have been there's been no evidence that any legal challenges will affect the results. But here we are, you know, two days after the election, and we're already seeing a barrage of, of lawsuits being filed. Um, you know, as as recently as, as last night, earlier today, the president and his campaign they they they're making a lot of promises to bring the election to the Supreme Court. Um, they filed lawsuits in, in in multiple states, specifically three of the battleground states that remain up in the air, um, and what they're trying to do is they're, they're they're actually attempting to halt any type of vote counting that occurs after the election now we talked about it a lot on tuesday and and it's been discussed a lot in the media and, and various news channels but you know there's a difference between votes being halted and votes being submitted and I, I think I think what what's very important for the viewers to understand is what the president is trying to say is that the states need to seize even counting ballots that have been properly submitted, properly postmarked on or before election day, and specifically with respect to absentee ballots and mail-in ballots. Um, now, what what we're seeing right now is uh, is is a lot of action happening in in the state of Pennsylvania, um, and, and Pennsylvania remains to be one of the few states which may or may not have an impact on, on what happens in the election. Um, as we know, prior to the election itself, the Trump campaign had filed a claim in in Pennsylvania state court to 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 have a court order essentially that any ballots that were received after the election should not be counted now what the state did in response is they said okay you know this obviously seems like a hotly contested issue we're going to take those ballots that are received after the election and count them separately we're going to place them in a separate pile uh, uh, but 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 now what's happening is the, the the tone is switching to more of a recap type of situation, especially as the numbers begin to, to, to narrow and, and the margin that Trump once had in the state of Pennsylvania starts to kind of slim. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what we might hear in the upcoming days is a lot more talk about recounts. Now, yeah. in the state of Pennsylvania itself, an automatic recount is only triggered if the margin of victory is 0.5% or less. Uh, aside from that, uh, you know, typically the losing candidate does have the right to demand a recount, but that petition that they file in court wouldn't have to be supported by that's signed out. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's a lot to follow. Uh, you're following it for us as we are and our reporters as well. We're going to continue to check in with you uh, as some of these things change throughout the, the next few days. Thank you so much, Attorney Anish. Parikh for joining us uh, and giving us your insight tonight. Thank you guys. Okay.